We arrived down at the Kennedy Space Center about four days before launch. This is us getting suited up. See how happy everybody else is. Um, it's a really a great day to go out to the launch pad. Um, big crowd there, which we always like to see. And then we climb into the Airstream and take the five-mile trip out to the pad. Helicopter escort, he's there to make sure we don't turn around. <laughs> we get out of the pad, and uh, there's really nobody else out there except us. Uh, suit techs, a few of them, firefighters to help us out, and then we climb in. It's uh, about three hours before we lift off is when we start to get strapped in, a little bit before that. That's uh, strapping in the mid-deck. Uh, Mike's telling all the Aggies he loves them. <laughs> Karen's saying, do I look fat in this suit? <laughs> and Ron's happy to be there. Now, while uh, we all tend to live for today, the discovery from Kibo will uh, certainly offer hope for tomorrow. Uh, meet us on Arigato, Ite Kimasu. Uh, now stand by for the greatest show on Earth. I have no idea what I said. <laughs> Avenue. TLS is good. The main engine start. Six seconds. Main engine start. Three coming up. Three, two. Three to hundred. Hang on. Booster ignition. Auto two. Auto two. Auto auto. I see three and one oh four. I see a command and a roll. Houston Discovery roll program. I am LV Lynch. LV Lynch. Roger roll Discovery. Roger roll Discovery. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery, a man-made license. Oh, what a view at the side. Uh, the digitals. Thank you. Point one, it's coming up at 1.2. All right, that's all right. Point point two, two, three, coming up. Hang on. Three, one, four. Spectacle. Discovery, go and throttle up. Roger, go and throttle up. All right. Everything was looking good. There's 90 seconds. Uh, thank right. you. 100,000 feet. The limb of the earth looks awesome, guys. You see less than 50. It's 103, 103. Little, little bit. Hey, little bit little 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 good control. Give me those. Dump's going. Looks good to me. I see the dump. Very good. That bat T's coming down. I like Five. that. It's just looking good. You have three people on the flight deck need to do a big high five. 90 seconds to meet, go. All right. Well, there's me go. Two, uh, three lights. Yep. On ET set. Yep. And I'm going off call. So there we were. We just took the most thrilling ride of our life, but we had a lot of work in front of us. We had to turn our rocket ship into a spaceship. We're saying goodbye to the tank there. We had a lot of work to do. There was no time to have any fun. <laughs> no time to take pictures or, uh, or snack on an apple. Uh, in reality, though, we had a long way to go to catch up to uh, Space Station, about a, a million miles or so. Here's uh, Mark doing a rendezvous burn very precisely because we have a long way to go. And as we get closer, we see uh, our goal, their space station, and she's beautiful. Uh, at sunrise there, coming up, uh, we first time we see all the beautiful colors. Here's Karen keeping us in line. And we show up uh, underneath space station. She's huge. We're about 600 feet below her. And Mark leans over to me and he says the words that any person on an airplane doesn't want to hear. Initiating RPM, three, two, one, Mark. He says, watch this. <laughs> And he pulls back on the stick and says, I'm going to do a loop. <laughs> OK. He'd get fired if he did that without telling anybody. So this is our little maneuver uh, to look at the belly of uh, the heat shield of Discovery. And it turned out uh, she was in perfect condition. So we were happy for our ride home. We had a lot of work to go. And uh, here comes the, the rest of Rendezvous. We're getting in here at about 20 feet, a couple of minutes to docking. And we have gone. Again, about a million miles down to a three-inch tolerance. And here's Mark uh, finishing up the rendezvous, precisely guiding uh, the docking port right in the heart. 0.09. 
two inches. Capture light. And there was much rejoicing. And Houston and station capture so confirmed. All right. All right. I'll get on What's with that? hockey. Hey. Thanks. It's a lot of training, man. Good job, <laughs> Thank you. That was a great, great fly. <laughs> Discovery arriving. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, you guys looking hey, for? Hey, hey, you looking for a plumber? Sergey, how are you? Good. Thank you, guys. Great to see you. Hey, Ronnie, look back real quick. Okay, after we get the hatches open. We all start heading on board. It's a great time to see uh, see old friends and new friends, and then it's time to get to work. First hauling the spacesuits across. Ron and I got busy with that. Then Mark and the rest of the gang were busy hauling these big bags out of the orbiter for temp stow inside the station as we start to move in and get to work. First day is busy, and uh, Ronnie and I. Uh, uh, headed to the airlock fairly quickly to start pre-breathing oxygen and get ready for an overnight camp out in the airlock in preparation for the uh, first spacewalk. The next day they get us suited up, shove us uh, in the airlock, close the hatch, and a little while later we're heading outside to uh, get started. I think some of my first words to Ron were, whatever you do, don't look down. <laughs> the first spacewalk, a big part of it was uh, preparing the Japanese laboratory to be installed on the space station. You can see a little bit of us moving around out there very carefully, going from handrail to handrail. Uh, if you don't look down, it's a whole lot like just in training. Uh, Ron taking a peek in the back windows of the orbiter. It, everybody looks so warm and cozy inside while we're out here. The temperatures are plus and minus 200 degrees, and uh, the, the, you're dealing with the, the uh, lights going out about every 45 minutes. We pulled the covers off of the uh, Japanese lab and uh, got it all ready for the installation. You'll see some of that in a few minutes. On the second spacewalk, we're hauling a couple of great big cameras down to the outside end of the uh, Japanese laboratory here. We got those cameras installed and then uh, commenced to pulling off a bunch of covers that were on that Japanese robot arm. Uh, these covers were a special joy to us as we uh, pulled all of those off and tried to get them stuffed in bags to bring them inside. And uh, this is some audio that we did not include in the video. <laughs> hey, this is uh, getting ready to start on our third spacewalk. Um, uh, this is just a, a view of the uh, solar uh, rotary joint that uh, Mike was inspecting, and this is us putting the uh, foot restraint onto the end of the uh, robotic arm. Uh, our main objective on the third spacewalk was to basically replace this big nitrogen tank that you see me holding there. It's uh, about 550 pounds, and we temp stowed it way out on the truss here, uh, as you see that, and then we grabbed the new one that was brought up on an earlier flight and brought it back and installed it. And so this is what we call the windshield wiper maneuver with me on the end of the arm sweeping a big arc over the top of the station. So right now, the station's about 100 feet below me with the Earth 220 miles below, and it was just an absolutely spectacular view that you can see from my helmet camera right here. Uh, probably about 270 degrees seeing the whole horizon out there and really just unbelievable view seeing the, the blue planet just hanging in the blackness of space was just a, an incredible sight. Uh, this is uh, installing the, the nitrogen tank back onto the truss and you can uh, see a view down the truss there as we do that. Meanwhile, Mike is back uh, inspecting the uh, port side uh, of the arrays. Again, taking some samples and just doing an inspection, making sure everything's uh, okay out there. Then the last part, uh, or one of the last parts of the uh, third spacewalk was to install this TV camera way on the end of the truss that we retrieved on the second spacewalk. Uh, Mike and I uh, repaired it uh, inside and then brought it back out and then uh, here is uh, Mike with an uh, Aggie salute, uh, which <laughs> signals the end of our, our spacewalks. Uh, we are on our way back in now, um, just saying goodbye uh, to the spectacular view as we come back in. Uh, here I'm closing the thermal cover, and there's our welcoming committee. Uh, we were pretty excited at this point. We had three very successful spacewalks. All of our objectives uh, were met, and so we're pretty happy there. 
We had a lot of great robotics on this mission. Um, one of the first things we had to do was pick up the inspection boom that STS-123 left behind. We couldn't take it with us because of the size of the Japanese module in our payload bay. So we picked that up, and uh, one of the main goals, of course, of our mission was to install the Japanese lab. And here you see Aki is gently pulling it out of the payload bay. And then we started a very, very slow maneuver of this gigantic module. It's the biggest that's on station so far at over 32,000 pounds. Uh, the maneuver, obviously, with such a big mass, had to go uh, quite slow. Uh, it was about an hour of maneuver, but um, it was some great views while we did that. And of course, as we um, attached it onto the space station, it was a great day for the people in Japan. Another thing we needed to do with the robotic arm was move the uh, logistics module. This is another piece that STS-123 brought up, and they had it temp stowed. So we slowly guided it over to its final uh, resting position on top of the Japanese laboratory. We also had the opportunity to work on the new arm that is actually at the end of the Japanese lab. Aki and I worked together to check it out and get it ready for uh, folks to use in the future. After we got the uh, Japanese module installed, uh, we opened the uh, hatch and uh, here's us uh, putting a sign. It's a Japanese curtain. Uh, it just said, uh, eat more chicken. <laughs> 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 and then uh, after uh, Karen and I checked out the air inside, uh, everyone came inside and, uh, you know, especially <laughs> Garrett enjoyed the moment, uh, showing off all his skills that he uh, learned uh, through his uh, expedition. <laughs> after having some time of fun, uh, we had to get back to work. Uh, we uh, transferred eight racks. These racks uh, are like uh, 500 pounds each. Um, and this is a sign where the, uh, the technicians on the ground put at the hatch for us. And uh, we saw the, the Japanese module grow each day. Um, it was empty and then it was full of racks. And uh, in the stowage module, it's uh, empty now. And also, uh, in the Japanese module, we had two windows, which we looked outside every, every time that we had some free time. Uh, the, the view out there was magnificent. We had the opportunity to do a uh, number of press conferences, which was a great opportunity for people on Earth to talk to us and ask us questions and for us to share our experiences with them. The station is a awesome place to work. As you can see, it's quite spacious, and uh, it's probably the only place in or out of this world where, you can, where it's actually fun getting around, uh, this much fun that can turn you into a kid again. And uh, as busy as we were, uh, we had some uh, time to get together and have some dinner, and we had a guest there, uh, our uh, 11th crew member. <laughs> But now uh, it's time to say goodbye, and we had to leave uh, Greg Shamitoff on board and uh, uh, Garrett uh, come with us uh, back to Earth. Eight. Physical sep. Houston and station from Discovery. Physical separation. And now it's time to detach from station and head home. You guys ready for a little theme music? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, this music is actually for real. Garrett pulled this out and uh, started rolling this in the cockpit, and it was, uh, it was a true surreal moment. It was a, uh, a point in the mission where a lot of the stress of all the EVAs and the robotics and the assembly and all the tasks that we had trained for a long time, it was all behind us, and we could actually really, really enjoy the moment. That was us coming up on the uh, western coast of South America, and now here we are over the Amazon jungle. This is great music. Nice <laughs> choice. Thanks. <laughs> and then there we are alone again.
living on board the shuttle now as we're backing away. The station's becoming a star in the distance. We're still continuing to live. We're shaving. We're washing our hair. Aki's is pretty easy. Uh, Karen's was a little more of an issue. <laughs> more like a main. Here's a hawk making uh, one more batch of scrambled eggs. And proof for all kids at heart. There's a little Aki hockey. <laughs> a little weight lifting. <laughs> and more stupid tricks. We don't know what that is. <laughs> Here's Garrett's, or uh, uh, Ron's grouper impersonation. Don't do it. Oh. Get him, get him. Proof were really uh, kids at heart. A little rugby on the mid deck. Oh, we got. <laughs> that was more of a mess than we hoped for. Here's a. Uh... <laughs> Karen's cheating. She used her hand. Probably even when I hit my head. You're gonna hit your head. <laughs> <laughs> no commanders were harmed in the making of this video. So now it's time to uh, get ready to come home. We have to uh, turn our spaceship into an airplane. We're uh, all really busy up on the flight deck uh, getting ready. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to do. And it's, uh, it, it's a little bit tense up on it. <laughs> Uh, which th these guys are all tired because they did most of the work getting us all prepared down there to, to come back. So here we are entering the atmosphere, um, and you can tell out the window here it's pretty hot, about 5,000 degrees out there. Gravity's starting to set in here. That was us slowing down from Mach 25 to Mach 1. Uh, we're gliding all the way from over the Indian Ocean, more or less, back home. Houston, Discovery, runway's in sight. About 10 times steeper than an airliner. Roger, runway in sight, Discovery. Fortunately, our uh, runway is 15,000 feet long. Touching down about... Hold it right there. There you go. 200 knots. There you go. Touchdown, 195. Beautiful. Parachute slows us down. I don't know what they're congratulating each other for. <laughs> A couple hours later, uh, get to walk around the vehicle and then head back to crew quarters to see your families. <laughs>